Hi everyone, I'm Cynthia Treen, and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be making tiny bumblebees. I'll show you how to mount them on pins or wires so you can display them with your felt animals, or as I've done here on this bee skep pin cushion that I adapted from my snail backpack tutorial. Check out the post for a link to that video, my Etsy shop, Patreon, and a detailed list of supplies for this project. I also think this bee would be a lovely addition to a spring or bridal bouquet. For those of you just finding me, I design hand stitching kits and patterns, inspiring for advanced makers, but detailed enough for beginners to join in the fun. This channel is a companion to my Patreon group, where I design monthly projects for fans and supporters. If you want to learn hand sewing, it's a great place to begin. And if you're an experienced maker, there's lots to create and share. Together, we make lighthearted felt animals, accessories, and crafts that delight people of all ages. Okay, let's get started. The first thing is to gather your materials. I've provided a detailed list in the post, so use that as your guide. The bee's body is made with yellow chenille pipe cleaner and black embroidery floss, and its wings are printed onto tissue paper, finished with nail polish, and stabilized with invisible tape. You'll also need tailor's wax, a white watercolor pencil, zap gel glue with a micro tip, and Ranger Glossy Accents Clear Dimensional Medium, as well as a few basic tools. For each bee, you'll need a 1.5 inch length of pipe cleaner and a three ply length of embroidery floss, about 20 inches long. Trim 3 eighths of an inch of chenille from either end. Then fold the piece at its midpoint, a bit more open than a right angle. Both ends of the bee are wrapped with black floss. The fold here will be the head. I've coated my floss with tailor's wax to make it a bit tacky so the wraps won't slip. I love this Merchant and Mills tailor's wax because it's a bit softer than most, but you can use a candle or tea light if you don't have any on hand. To make the head wrapping, hold about six inches of the floss parallel to the left side of the fold. That floss end will help you tie off after wrapping. Wrap 20 times over the fold, allowing the thread to thicken at its center into a bead or egg shape. Then tie off on the inside of the fold. You can smooth the surface of the wax thread by squishing it a little bit with your fingers. Then trim off your ends. For the tail end of the bee, use your pliers to fold the trimmed pipe cleaner back on itself. Fold at the midpoint of the trimming. Then squeeze the sides together so the folded ends overlap. You'll use a second length of three-ply waxed floss to wrap this end. This time, however, we need to thread a needle to get the job done. Stitch through the overlapped folds, leaving a tail as before for tying off. Whip stitch around the bent end, spiraling the floss so it covers the entire trimmed area. This will give you a tacky base layer of thread. Now, instead of passing through the end, wrap around it, building up the thread to the height of the yellow chenille. Here again, you can smooth the wax surface by pressing it with your fingers. I think I need a few more wraps to get close to the height of the chenille here. To end off, pass the needle through the center again. Use either pliers to push through, or an appropriate work surface that you can push against. Then tie it off with a square knot. Trim the floss, and press the wax-coated ends so they adhere to the body. To add the body segmenting, 
Sharpen your watercolor pencil to a fine point. Then dip the tip in water and mark a few segments on the back portion of the body. For the wings, I tried quite a few options. Hopefully you'll have something at hand that will work. If not exactly what I use, perhaps my trials will give you inspiration for other possibilities. I first made the wings from some drafting acetate that I had in my stash. I made a cardstock template and traced around it with a sepia 005 micron pen. Then I filled in rough wing-like lines. I found it wasn't necessary for them to be perfectly symmetrical. Then I carefully cut out the wings, leaving the sepia border as I trimmed. I also used my pliers to make bends in the wings for dimension. My thought was that these little creases would mimic the texture of a real wing. But at that point, I got to thinking. Not everyone has acetate lying around, and I wanted to see what I could find that everyone might have on hand at home. So I designed some wings and a tracing template. Depending on your supplies, you can decide which works best for you. Here are a few ideas of what you can use to make the printed wings. You can always use regular printer paper. It won't be translucent, but a layer of clear nail polish can help give it a wing-like shine. You can also print on a translucent vellum. Here again, you can use the clear nail polish for a glossy shine. The tissue paper technique turned out to be my favorite, and I bet most of you have these materials at home. Because at the time I only had light blue gift tissue, I used the tissue that separated the sheets in this ancient acetate pad. But I print tested the blue gift tissue as well, and it worked beautifully. To prepare the tissue, cut it to the exact size of your printer paper. I used a ruler, cutting board, and a roller cutter to do this. Next, you'll need to attach the tissue paper to the printer paper on its leading edge and halfway down each side. I tried two techniques here. I used a double stick film with a removable paper backing, but any double stick tape should work. I also used invisible tape and I wrapped it around the printer paper and tissue edge and that worked just as well. To find out which side of the paper your printer prints on, mark a scrap piece with an arrow and place it with the arrow facing up into the printer, then run a test. My printer prints on the top side of the paper, so I put mine in tissue side up when I printed. Next, I cut a few wings off my sheet to work with and place them on a nonstick surface. I'm using a silicone mat, but you can use whatever you have handy. Nail polish is completely optional, but I thought it added a nice sheen and a little bit of magic. To print these, I used a laser jet printer. And when I brushed on the nail polish right out of the printer, I found that it smudged a bit. But after it had cooled and the ink had set, I had no more smudging. If you run into some smudging, you can also try using a very light touch with the brush, smoothing the liquid without putting pressure on the ink. This helped me before I realized I just needed to let it set a bit longer. Go ahead and allow that first side to dry completely. 
I used a hair dryer to help speed up my dry time and then coat the backside as well. Finally, I covered each wing on its front and back with invisible tape. This strengthens the tissue and prevents the wings from tearing. Now it's time to cut out our wings. As usual, I love these Fiskar scissors. Their sharp tip and spring-loaded grip allow me to trim around small pieces with precision. In the process of making this video, I ended up making a whole swarm of wings. But before we attach them, let's add the antenna. We'll need a single strand of waxed black floss for this. Thread your needle and stitch it through the front of the bee's head. Then make a stitch backwards and pass through the same path coming out the opposite side again. Cut the antenna to length and add a bead of glossy accents to each end. With the antenna dry, now we're ready to add the wings. First, fold them in half and get ready to go holding them in the grip of your needle nose pliers. Apply a small bead of zap gel glue, then slip the wing fold into the bee's back between the folded pipe cleaner. I like to have a bamboo skewer handy to poke in further if I need to. Whatever wire you mount the bee on, the process is the same. For a pin, trim off the ball end, then make a right angle fold. The fold must be short enough to slip between the wings. Poke the pin through the center body and wing fold until it is hidden and stops against the wing fold. Then add a drop of zap gel between the wings and a pinch of chenille fluff to cover and flock the center body. Use a skewer to press in the fluff so everything adheres well. To really stabilize that pin, I decided to add a dab of zap glue to the underside of the bee and a little bit of fluff, just for good measure. With our bees complete, all they need is a place to call home. Home could be a spring bouquet or this little bee skep pincushion. To make it, you can watch my very first video tutorial. In it, I'll show how to create a miniature snail backpack to fit my felt animals. Although I've altered the bee skep pattern slightly, it uses the identical construction process as the snail backpack. I'll just show you a few things to transform it into its new incarnation. Here are the supplies we'll need. I've included these in the post for you. Okay, let's begin. I have the shell spiral constructed here, but before stitching it together as we do in the other video, I'll wrap it with pearl cotton floss to mimic the coiled basket stitching of an actual bee skep. I needed a large eye for the pearl cotton, so I'm using a long darner to start the knotted thread at the tip of the coil. Wrap the pearl cotton around the felt coil, like the spiral on a candy cane. When you reach the larger end, knot off on the gathered underside of the coil. Now you can stitch the coil together as I show in the snail backpack tutorial. This one's pinned and ready for stitching. Unlike the snail, I've tucked in the open end beneath the coil as the skep would be constructed. When finished, you can add the base. To do that, you'll cut out the felt and the chipboard circles, as I have here. On my first version, 
the base of my coil came out a bit bigger than on my second. This felt basket weaving is not an exact science. So I graduated some dashed lines on the base pattern. This way you can fit the base perfectly to your coil size. On the felt circle, make a tightly spaced running stitch around the edge, leaving the thread attached so that it can later be gathered. Center and glue the chipboard circle to the felt circle. Then draw the thread tightly around the chipboard. While holding it taut as I am here, press and steam it flat on a high setting. Make a few stitches to secure the gathers, then knot off. Center the completed skep on top of the base and use a blind stitch to connect the pieces. To make a blind stitch, make parallel stitches alternating between the skep and the base and stitch full circle all the way around. If you feel your stitches need it, stitch around a second time for strength. To make the skep opening, I used a Derwent Inktense pencil in Bark number 2000. Before making any marks, sharpen it to a fine point. Then dip the point in water and mark a small arched opening. It's a good idea to test the pencil on scrap felt just to get a feel for how it works. Take your time on this. I have sped up the replay times two, and I don't think anything's lost with the speed, but it took me about a minute and a half to mark the door. For the final flourish, I added a strand of pearl cotton between the base and the skep. Well, that's it for today, folks. I hope you all enjoy creating these bees and their little bee skep pincushion. In our next video, we'll be back with larger, small animals and some classic felt bears. I'll see you then. If you would like to do these projects and you're not already a supporting member of my Patreon group, consider joining us with a donation of your choice. As a supporting member, you'll have access to over three years of monthly projects, patterns, and tutorials. The truth is, I love to give things away, and Patreon is the closest I can come to becoming a craft philanthropist. You choose your donation. Join monthly or annually, or just briefly to make something special. Support and connection with my amazing patrons is what feeds my creativity. So let's end with a giant thank you to my present patrons, my past patrons, and for those of you who will join the fun in the future. We all look forward to meeting you. Thanks again for watching.